Now let's do, oh, I forgot the bananas. Ay, ay, ay. She cannot be trusted. Hey guys, welcome to Real Simple Cooking School. I'm your teacher, Dawn, and today we're talking about your basic baking pantry. With a few super simple, accessible ingredients, you can whip up cookies, cakes, and everybody's favorite, banana bread at the drop of a hat. The workhorse of any kitchen, all-purpose flour. Start with all-purpose. Um, it can do the most. So we're gonna do our dry ingredients in one bowl and our wet ingredients in another. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my all-purpose flour right in here. Then, two other things you probably already have in the kitchen, baking soda and baking powder. Um, these are leaveners. That means they're gonna help things rise along with eggs, because eggs are a leavener too. Now, baking soda, I'm just gonna add a quarter teaspoon here. Baking soda does particularly well when there's something acidic um, in the batter, like lemon juice, yogurt, buttermilk, something like that. Then there's baking powder, often called double acting baking powder, and that's because it does act twice. Once when it gets wet, and another time when it gets hot. Um, so you'll often see baking soda and baking powder. This is just a teaspoon together uh, mixed into your dry ingredients and baked goods. So we've got flour, we've got baking powder, we've got baking soda, we need a little salt. Um, this is kosher salt, which is my choice for cooking and for baking. Half teaspoon kosher salt right in there. Now we're gonna give it a little whisk. Whisk is a great alternative to like sifting. So we've got our dry ingredients here. I'm gonna set those aside. Yeah, and let's get our wet ingredients together. So, big bowl. In baking, sugar is usually considered a wet ingredient. So here, plain old white granulated sugar. Brown sugar, another essential baking pantry ingredient. I use light brown and dark brown sugar pretty much interchangeably. So just gonna combine those two. Large eggs are your best bet for baking. Give it a crack. Okay, and a little melted butter. This is half cup. Now, unsalted butter, another one of your baking pantry staples. Um, if butter ever goes on sale, buy it in bulk. Buy a few pounds, keep them in the freezer. Freeze is great. What you're really looking for in your bananas are like, you don't wanna eat it. It should be nearly black, so soft inside. As they ripen, they're just gonna get sweeter and sweeter, and those are ideal. However, if you just like need to make banana bread and you've got this very well-stocked pantry now, you could whip it up whenever you want, and you only have like perfectly edible bananas, there's a fast track, you can roast them. 400 degrees, give or take. Um, roast them till the skins are nice and dark and the inside is soft and sweet, and then you're ready to go. Oh, one more wet ingredient I forgot. Vanilla. The caps are almost always a half teaspoon. I don't know if that's like industry standard or what, but it almost always works. Also, a little more, a little less, it's not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna give that another whisk. So, bananas go into my wet, and I'm just gonna use the trusty rubber spatula to work those in. The riper your bananas, the easier this will be to, to stir together. So, we're gonna just Make this nice and incorporated, and then in goes our dry ingredients. And we're just gonna fold this together. I love to add nuts to baked goods for great crunch, big flavor. Today I'm gonna add some pecans. Um, pecans, walnuts would be really good here, but choose whatever nuts you like. You could even leave the nuts out. So, we've got our batter ready to go. Get my loaf pan ready to go. Now, chances are you have a loaf pan. It might be glass, it might be a little bit bigger than this. To prep this guy for banana bread or any loaf cake, I do like to use a bit of nonstick spray. You want to spray this like over the sink or the trash can. Otherwise, your board or your floor are going to get really greasy and you could like slip like a cartoon and fall. So, I'm going to go to the sink, spray this. The other safeguard is a little bit of parchment. Now, you can find parchment um, like you know white or bleached and then this natural kind. Either is totally fine, I don't have a preference. All we did here was 
measure the length of my loaf pan, and then we cut a little strip like this. And then it fits tidily inside. And I just want to take my finger and make sure the parchment is really down there in the corners. I've left a couple inches on either side overhang. Same, you're gonna do the same thing if you're making brownies or really anything in a rectangular or square vessel. Okay, we got our nuts. We've got our loaf pan lined and ready to go. I'm glad I remembered. And into the pan it goes. Now, depending on the ripeness of your bananas, this batter could look a little looser, but it's okay, it's still gonna work. Um, banana bread, one of the reasons it's so popular is because most recipes are really forgiving. Batters in a loaf pan, and we just wanna give it a little bit of a even Steven here. And that is it. Now, you could pop this in the oven, it'd be good to go, it's gonna come out, be delicious. But I wanna show you one very special way to finish it. Banana, this one does not have to be super ripe. Peel it. And you know, bananas have these seams. So just follow the seam with your paring knife. That's this little guy. And then you just lay your banana right on top. Actually, let's go this way. Pretty right. Okay, again, pop it in the oven, you're good to go. But we're gonna gild the lily a little bit and just sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar. That's gonna caramelize on top. That just means like brown and turn to caramel. It's gonna be super shiny, yummy, and super delish. 350 degrees, probably about an hour. You can kind of bet on it. And now, we wait. It's time. Here is this beautiful loaf. I mean, and see how the bananas on top kind of shrunk down. Okay, here's the hardest part about banana bread is the waiting. This has been out for a while. I mean, like, it's cool to the touch. Um, Try and take it out of the loaf pan too soon and it'll fall apart. I've got my little parchment handles here. Makes it super easy to just lift it. You might have to wiggle it a little bit right out of the pan. And then get your board ready. You don't wanna go like wandering around the kitchen like holding the loaf baby. So I'm just gonna scoot this aside. We're not gonna need that anymore. And here is the trick to slicing bread of any kind really, but especially more tender loaf cakes, and that is a serrated knife. Serrated, it's the one with the shark teeth. Now, instead of like coming at the loaf and just like pressing down with all your might, that's gonna squish the cake. Like why did you spend any time making it look nice if you're gonna treat it like that on the back end? So instead, serrated knife, it's also gonna help get you through any of those nuts or pieces of chocolate if you added them. So. Get your fingers out of the way, pull them back a little bit, and you're just gonna saw. That's what those teeth are there for, like a saw. Aha, beautiful cross section. As thick or thin as you like. And there you have it. I'm gonna cut a few pieces from my friends. And there you have it, it's moist. You can see those pecan pieces, the bananas are doing like this cool thing up top. And all that with your basic baking pantry and a few old bananas, you've got yourself a delicious banana bread. So long, see you next time.